today I want to share with you this real simple squash and stretch node that I made to turn the clicky things in my game real juicy and squishy and fun to play with. It's a part of this game that I'm finally making after 10 years. I prototyped this thing back in 2015 and I, it's time. I'm making a game out of it. So as I come across these fun little things that I think will be useful, they're going to go into videos. Hopefully one day I'll be begging you to wishlist the game, but for today, let's just get into it. So as I mentioned, this is a very tactile game, right? There's all these doodads and gizmos that you can click on, and I wanted them to be really fun to interact with. So I started by making this lever, and you know, it works, but it, you can see it's boring. It's just not fun to interact with. So I went back to the drawing board, and I added some squash and stretch into that animation. You can see the the plate kind of bounces a little bit, but I, I got it in there and I thought, you know, it's not quite there. And then I realized I got to go back, reanimate the whole thing, re-import. The, there's no way this is going to work, right? This is just not a tenable workflow. So I thought, all right, what if I made this little bit of code that would allow me, you can see here, it looks a little bit more pronounced. We'll talk about changing the values on that in a minute. But now I've got the ability to change this animation without having to go back to another animation tool. Um, and it also lets me keep the sprite sheets a little lighter. So let's take a quick look. You know, here's the first sheet. And it's hard to tell, but that squash and stretch is on that plate. And you can see there's a lot of duplication. It's going to be a lot longer to animate, yada, yada. Going back to the final, at least final as of this video iteration. Now we've got the plate separated out. We've got our sprite sheet here, which you see no longer has that plate in it. And then the easy squash and stretch node, which we're here to talk about. And just real quick, I can feel you judging me. Why isn't this done in 3D? I have my reasons. We can talk about them in another video. Uh, I'd be glad to. Today, I just want to talk about the squash and stretch. So if I click on this node, you see I've got, uh, I can define the X and Y amounts that it sort of squashes or stretches in, uh, a random offset value to, to change that value by a little bit each time, and a speed variable, which I think is fairly self-explanatory. Lastly, up at the top here, we've got this array of nodes, and this is array of node 2Ds that we want to control with our easy squash and stretch. Now, right now, it's just got the plate assigned to it, right? But if I wanted to also squash and stretch this right here, I can drag this in and test this again. You'll see, you can. it might be difficult to see, but you can see it is kind of leaving a trail because it's squashing and stretching as it animates. And, you know, we were mentioning that this felt maybe a little pronounced. And now, instead of having to go back and reanimate the darn thing, I can change this value to 1.2 on my squash and stretch and play. And now it's not quite as dramatic. So I have that flexibility to bring these things to life within Godot and leave the animating to external tools where it absolutely has to be done by hand. In any case, there's not a whole lot to show off. Um, so we're gonna get through this real quick. So here's the script that drives it. I'm not gonna go through this line by line. If, by all means, if you have questions, leave them in the comments down below or hop over to the Discord. I'll be happy to answer your questions. The nickel tour here is that the squash and stretch amount that you're giving it, it gets set on the node 2D immediately. And then over time, the speed value, it lerps back to its initial scale. It is tracking the starting scale. So if you pass it an object that is not of scale one, it will return to whatever scale it started at. Um, I am triggering started and stopped signals. So if you need to tie into those, they're there. I don't have them in, in this demonstration, but I thought that would be handy. And so the last thing to look at here is the implementation. So let's go into the final iteration of the lever here. Um, it's got a reference to the easy squash and stretch node, just like any other node. And then when I want it to, you know, bloop and look kind of fluid, I'm just calling this start method on it. So I'm doing that on the down and up animation. And that's it, very simple. So I imagine some of you are thinking either, why not just use the Shaker plugin? And you absolutely can, it's a great plugin. I subscribe to the keep it simple, stupid method. I like to keep things as basic and quick and easy to use until I have a good reason to overcomplicate them. Uh, saves me time on the front end development. 
saves me time integrating them because I don't have to go through a million submenus. For this game, as of right now, this does everything I need it to do. There are some limitations, like of course the squashing and stretching happens around the origin of the clip that you're passing it, which on occasion can be problematic, but again, it's a limitation I'm, I'm happy to work around in exchange for ease of use. So I'm showing this off as a, a sort of a clicking thing. It doesn't always have to be a click. If you imagine you've got maybe decorative billboards as your character walks next to them, they could bounce. Um, I have this little test tube example. This is to exemplify the um, array feature, which we kind of already looked at. But you can see they're all moving together. If this were an escape room, you know, maybe this is a little thing that I play when I reset this if the player fails the puzzle. And if I want those to not look so samesy, I can give it a little bit of a random offset and play it again. And now when that single node controls all of them, you can see they sort of wiggle a little bit independently. So that's it. If you're interested in this, I'm going to put it up on itch. I'm going to call it bacon juice, which is a little bit gross and a little bit funny, probably more gross than funny. But the plan is as I build up these little sweeteners and, and, and utilities for that game. I'm going to move them into that project. They'll be available for you to use for free if you would like. If you're interested in that kind of content, please consider subscribing, liking. That is all for today. More than ever, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in the next video.